Hey guys, welcome to a quick video tutorial on how to install Windows 98 off a USB flash drive and we're going to use the easy to boot software to create our USB flash drive. Now I've done a video recently showing you how to do the same thing with Windows XP and I got quite a few questions about can you use easy to boot to install Windows 98 and the answer is yes you can but it's a little bit more complicated. And I've been actually working on this for a couple of days and there are several uh, ways of doing this. And initially the solution I found was just way too complicated with too many steps involved. So I believe what I'm showing you today is a lot more straightforward and um, easy to follow. I will put all the links to the downloads down below in the description. You need to go to the easytoboot.com website and download the easy to boot uh, executable and then install it. Next, we need to launch the easy to boot software, but with the administrator privileges. On the left side, select your language for the keyboard. Here, select the USB device. I'm using a, a SanDisk a USB flash drive and then click on this button. Now, the process will take a while and there will be another confirmation dialog uh, popping up. Just press OK and we will be back when the USB flash drive uh, is finished creating. So while the USB flash drive is being created in the background, we need to modify our ISO file. We need to make it a lot smaller. This is firstly because the easy to boot software will use a RAM drive basically. It will load the ISO file into the memory. So having a 600 meg ISO file means you need a machine with a gig of RAM or 700 or something like that. But the other issue is that there are lots of little files and it takes forever to load. Um, so we're gonna uh, trim the fat and delete a few things. Now I'm using the software Ultra ISO. It's a trial version, you can just download it and that's all we need to uh, accomplish our task. So basically we're gonna leave, uh, we're gonna delete all these folders here. So add-ons, CD sample, drivers and tools, just press delete. And then we're gonna go into the Windows 98 folder and we also delete these two folders. So there's a folder uh, OLS. Let's get rid of this one and to get rid of this one. So now our image is down to 120 megabytes. And this is just a quick edit because I forgot to mention this the first time around. I highly recommend that before you uh, save your new ISO file that you go into the Windows 98 folder and you add the USB storage driver. I will put a link to that one down below in the description because very likely um, if you didn't if you're dealing with a machine that doesn't have an optical drive or doesn't have a floppy drive you gotta have a way of adding drivers to that machine and the USB storage driver does exactly that so I'll put a link down below in the description where you can download that USB storage driver and I highly recommend that you include it into your ISO image so that you can then uh, after the installation just run it and then load all your stuff from USB we will save our new ISO, so save as. I'm gonna save it onto the desktop and I'm gonna call it Tiny Windows 98 SE. And it off it goes and it saved the ISO file. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna copy our ISO file. So this is the Tiny Windows 98 SE, which is only 120 megabytes. And we go to our easy to boot USB go into the ISO directory and then into Win and we paste it into here. And the last step has to do with renaming the file extension. Now by default, the .iso doesn't show up, so you might have to go up here under View and toggle the File Extensions option. And then we right click, rename, and it's very important that the file name gets changed to ISO and then DOS 01 and this will do a couple of things. So we just have to say yes to this prompt. What this does is it will, um, because the Windows 98 uh, boot disk is quite um, interesting. Uh, firstly, it boots, uh, it's a bootable CD, but then secondly, it loads a CD-ROM storage driver to then access the files on the disk. And that's what this uh, does. And this will also swap the USB uh, flash drive with the hard drive so that the hard drive is actually the first uh, physical drive in the machine. Because if you don't do that, that causes issues with the uh, drive not being marked as an active partition and all sorts of things. So basically, just rename it to ISO DOS01 
and we're good to go. We can now eject our USB flash drive and we will switch over to our capture machine and I'll show you how to install Windows 98 SE. Okay guys, so here we are on our retro PC. I just press F8 on the keyboard to get into the boot menu because we need to uh, boot from the USB flash drive rather than the hard drive. We can see our hard drive here. It's an 80 gig SATA. Uh, SanDisk is the option I selected. Now uh, the specs of the retro PC will be below in the description for you to take a look. Here we have easy to boot loading up. We go into the Windows boot menu then into tiny windows 98 se that's the iso file and it's gonna load that basically it's gonna copy everything into ram and the way it's gonna uh, configure things is the uh, a drive will be the floppy image with the uh, the boot floppy the b drive will become the cd with all the files from the iso image and c will be our hard drive and what we're gonna do uh, once this is loaded, we will partition the hard drive first, then we need to reboot our machine, then we'll format the hard drive, then we'll copy the Windows installation files onto the hard drive, and then we run setup. Okay, contents of CD are now on drive B, press enter to continue. So we're pressing enter, we're choosing boot from CD-ROM, and then we say start computer without CD-ROM support. On A, we'll we find the boot floppy, on B, we find the contents of our ISO image, which is the Windows 98 uh, disk. And on C is the hard drive. I've done a previous installation, but we're gonna wipe that. So we go back to A, type in F disk, press yes and yes. And you can see if you look carefully, there's an option number five, change current fixed disk drive. This option appears if you have more than one hard drive. So let's have a look, Press uh, select five, press enter. We can see two hard drives. The second one is actually the USB flash drive with 8 gig. The first one is the hard drive. It doesn't show 80 gig, it shows like uh, 10 or something. And that's a bug in FDisk. It's just cosmetic, don't worry about it. If you wanna know more why that is, you can just Google it. It has to do with uh, the limitation of working with 16 bit uh, numbers basically. So we're gonna first delete the existing partition. So we go option number three delete primary partition and we say yes and then we have to type in the label which was uh, retro underscore pc enter and the partition is gone so if we go in option number four display partition information there's no partition so now we can choose option number one and create a primary partition this is going to take a while but we're using a sata hard drive on a sata controller so it doesn't take nearly as long com um, as compared to if you're using an IDE hard drive. Here it's asking us if we want to use the maximum available size and make the partition active. We want to do that and it's gonna test the, uh, it's gonna verify the drive integrity one more time. And here we go, the primary partition is created. We press escape one more time and another time and now we need to restart our machine. I'm pressing F8 again because we have to reboot into our easy to boot USB flash drive one more time. And just like before, we go into the Windows boot menu and we select our tiny Windows 98 SE ISO image. Okay, once again, we choose option two and then starting the computer with the CD-ROM support, we go on to B, which is the contents of the ISO and the format program is uh, in the Windows 98 directory. We go format and then just uh, C colon, press enter, yes. This is fairly quick because uh, we have a SATA hard drive connected to a SATA controller and we're gonna give it the name Retro PC. Now we switch over to the C drive. There's nothing in here. We use the make directory command to create a win setup directory. We use the change directory command to go into that directory. Then we switch over back to B and we copy everything from here to our C drive. And the reason we're doing this is um, it's a lot faster to install from the C drive, but also later when drivers look for certain files, it's a lot more convenient if you have them on the C drive. And now we run the setup command, press enter. It's gonna do some file checking. And here we are in the Windows setup. 
press continue. Let's see what happens. Now you might get this error here. I've, I keep getting this error. I don't, not quite sure what it's saying. I might Google it, um, but it's not a concern. You just select continue. It's going to install into C slash windows. Click on next. It's doing a few more checks and then we can choose a installation mode. I usually untick this one. I go for all of those. I untick all that online stuff, but I do want all the multimedia things, all the system tools, cancel. So all the system tools and none of this. Go next, computer name, retro PC, Phil's LAN is my work group, regional settings. Let me just change that to up here, English Australia. Okay, next and next. We don't need a startup disk. Next and it will start copying some files across. So this is gonna take a while. We will fast forward uh, to just before it reboots. So that's all done copying. This is a good point to pull out the USB flash drive, which I just did, and we're gonna press OK and then restart the machine. So once again, our machine is booting, but this time I'm not pressing F8. We will just boot directly from the hard drive and not from the flash drive anymore, which isn't in the machine anymore because I just removed it. And you can see it's booting now, and we will commence the installation. So it's gonna ask us for our name and uh, license number and so on. So I just put some stuff in here, accept, and I'm just gonna enter the license key and we'll be back in a moment. Here we go, I just entered the license key. It's gonna commence the rest of the installation and when it's done, we'll be back shortly. And here we go, this is Windows 98 installed from the USB flash drive using easy to boot as well as ultra ISO. Now, as always, any questions, please leave them down below in the comments. Always eager to hear from you. And if you come up with any other methods, do let me know. Uh, always uh, interested to learn more about uh, retro PC gaming and so on. So hopefully um, someone out there, hopefully this is gonna be useful. Um, maybe you're dealing with one of those embedded computers or a, lap a laptop maybe that has a broken optical drive and you wanna install Windows 98. So, um, that's it for this video guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed it and you wanna see more similar content or other stuff about retro uh, PC gaming, uh, please subscribe, give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.